going on everyone today we're going to be changing the cam chain tensioner on my wr250x as well as the cam chain itself and also we're going to be checking the valves and changing the shims if required i feel like this is a pretty popular bike so i was surprised to see that there's not any videos that go through like a thorough guide on how to do this service so i figured since i'm doing it why not just document it as i go along so Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, here's most of the things you'll need. So we've got the tensioner itself, the gasket for it, the crush washers to go on the bolts that hold it in. I'll put the size of these in the description. And then the cam chain timing chain itself. And then torque wrench, flywheel puller, if you are gonna change the cam chain, and then just various sockets i'll put all the part numbers for these in the description all right so first things first we're going to start by draining the oil coolant i'm going to take the plastics off take the seat off and then take the gas tank off also for the cam chain tensioner i'm basically just going step by step off this guide from dual sport diary i'll paste the link in the description all right after you've drained your oil and coolant you want to come over to your your left side cover here and take these two covers off and then you want to get a 17 mil socket and turn this crank lever here until the line right in here aligns with the line here that's your top dead center that'll just help us out for later all right so now we're going to get into changing the actual tensioner itself but we can't really get to it from here, so we're gonna have to take our starter out first, and then we're gonna have to disconnect the header pipe for our muffler. So in order to get to our starter bolts down here, we gotta loosen up our muffler from these points. All right, I just went ahead and removed the entire exhaust. It took like two minutes, and it gives real good access to the starter. So we're gonna take this off and then go from there. All right, now we're gonna disconnect this wire from the top of the starter. This little boot right here just slides up off of it and then you just unbolt it from there. All right, so after you get these two bolts undone, the starter should slide straight back. Might take a little bit of force. All right, our starter's off. Make sure nothing gets in that hole right over there. So with the starter removed, now we can actually get to our tensioner bolts. If you want to and you can't reach it, you can remove the clutch actuator right here and that should be able to give you proper room to unbolt this. But I'm just going to come from that side and undo this bolt with a wrench. So as you're unscrewing the tensioner, it has a spring in it, so it's going to want to push itself out. So just keep a hold on it so it doesn't fling itself out. For the other bolt on the tensioner, I'm going to come in through the right side of the bike and undo it from here. All right, now we've got the tensioner out, so now we'll move on to taking the head cover off. Just pops out like that. We're gonna be replacing this gasket too, as well as the copper crush washers that secure it on. All right, so now we're gonna disconnect this clamp that holds the coolant hoses to the radiator and the frame. So these are the bolts that secure the radiator to the frame right here and that'll allow you to swing it around and out of the way. So in order to get to the valve cover, we're gonna have to tuck these hoses out of the way, but they are connected to the frame right here by a zip tie. So you're gonna wanna unclip that zip tie and just get these out of the way. And then after that, we're gonna disconnect the spark coil. We're also gonna be removing this breather hose that's connected to the valve cover. If you're having trouble taking the coil out, I recommend putting a shoelace around it and just giving it a good yank and that should get it out. If you're having trouble with the shoelace method to get that off, I recommend taking something blunt and putting it on the bottom of the connector right there and then hitting the other end with a mallet. That should knock it loose. All right, that was like a hundred times easier than the shoelace method, so do that. Also, don't forget to remove your spark plug. So getting this cover off is a really tight squeeze, so what I did is I pulled it up a little bit forward and then you rotate it clockwise. So we got the cover off. What I did was 
pulled it up a little bit, a little bit forward, rotated it clockwise, and pulled it out the side, right past the radiator right here, right out the side. All right, so checking our valve clearance, the exhaust valves are in the front, and then the tolerance on those is 0.23 to 0.3 millimeters. So you're gonna insert your feeler gauge there and see if it's in spec there. I already checked mine, mine are all in spec, so I'm not, I'm not gonna change anything. And then these are your intake valves in the rear. The clearance specs on your intake are 0.13 to 0.2 millimeters. I'm all good here, so I'm not gonna change anything. All right, so we got the left side crankcase cover off. Now you're gonna wanna give it quite a bit of force when pulling out, it might feel weird, but just keep pulling it and it'll pop right off. So now we're gonna use our flywheel puller to take the flywheel off and change our timing chain. Start by loosening this 17 mil nut on the front. So I didn't have a flywheel holder to get this nut off. So what I ended up doing was taking this piece of metal and stuffing it right there to keep the flywheel in place while I crank the nut out here. And that seemed to work pretty well. Now we're gonna thread our flywheel puller on. Just do that till it's fully on there. So get your wrench on here and then a socket on here. Then you're gonna twist them in different directions and that should pull the flywheel right off. All right, I didn't document the next part of this because I was in so much shock that I thought I actually broke my flywheel off my bike because it took an insane amount of force to get it off. It literally just snapped off after giving it like the most force I could have, but it was fine. But here's a little diagram of what is on there after. So ignore this bad drawing, but this is your crankshaft after you pull the flywheel off. And there's a little rectangular piece here, which is actually looks like that. And there's a gear here with a bearing inside of it. So you're just gonna wanna get something to wedge underneath this to pull this little piece out. And then you'll be able to take this gear off with the bearing and then access your timing chain behind it. All right, so now we're gonna be installing our new timing chain. For me, it was loose enough just to slip it forward off this cog. And then we're just gonna drop it down through and then fish it out from here. So once you've dropped your timing chain down through the engine, it's all gonna bunch up here and you're gonna remove these two bolts, which hold the, hold the chain on the bottom and then you'll be able to slide your chain right out. So we got the new timing chain on. Just, I just fished it through. I had these off or this guide off and then put it around that gear, put the guide back on. We wanna to torque those to 10 Newton meters each. And then I wrapped it around both gears and then, yeah, so now it's time to install the tensioner. And then after that, put the bike back together and we're done. So if you do accidentally move your flywheel or your chain jumps timing while you're messing around up there, what I did is I stuck just a hex key down into the spark plug hole so it's sitting on top of the piston. And then you can rotate this so that, I don't know if you see the little Husky logo right there, but you rotate it and at its highest point, that's top dead center. Then you can also look down here at the marks, the H and the I. This line right here is what aligned with this mark on the crank cover. So you want it over here in this position. My timing isn't correct here, but when your mark is in this position and you're at top dead center, then your lobes should be facing in opposite directions of each other. All right, so I have everything properly timed. So this is what it should look like. These lines should all be in the same line. And then your mark here, and that corresponds to the mark in the generator hole right here. So 
we're gonna go ahead and put the tensioner in now. If you need to move these cam gears, what I did is I just lifted the chain and twisted the gear. And if I needed to move this one, I did the exact same while holding this gear. All right, so I wanna give you guys a little rundown on how this tensioner works actually. So when you install it in the bike, when you're installing your new one, you're gonna install it when it's locked, which is all the way compressed. And then once it's inserted, you're gonna release the tension on the spring and then that'll create the tension in the cam chain itself. I just have it, I have it in some grips right now, which I found is the easiest way to compress it. So you turn this part clockwise, like you can't just, you can't just squeeze it shut. You have to turn it clockwise while pushing it inwards in order for it to compress actually. You want to get it to right here and to lock it in place you want this top line to be right at the end of it and then this this deeper groove the deeper groove you want right where the clip goes so you can see there's a little there's a little area for the clip to move so in order to lock it these two pins while it's squeezed pull them down and then that should lock it if it doesn't just keep messing with it that's the right way to do it they just have to sit in that groove which is what holds them in place all right, so now we're gonna install our tensioner. So I put a new gasket around it and we have it in the locked position. So we're just gonna go ahead and insert it into the hole. For now, we're just gonna put this front bolt in and only tighten it to finger tight because just in case it jumps timing when we set it, it'll be easy to take out. Also remember to put a new crush washer on tensioner bolt. So we got the tensioner on, everything's timed right. So what I did is I had someone help me. I had them turn the flywheel about a full turn while I was holding the left gear with both hands like this, holding the chain onto the gear to make sure it doesn't jump off and while they were turning it. So at around half of a turn, you can hear the tensioner release and go into the chain guide. And just after that, if it works, give it a couple more rotations just to make sure, make sure everything is timed up right. And then make sure your lines are still all horizontal with each other. And that it's also at top dead center when they're all horizontal, so. Yeah, now we're just gonna put everything back together. All right, five wheels back on. So now we wanna tighten this rotor nut to 65 Newton meters. So we got the crankcase back on. So there's a gear in here that's hard to put on with the flywheel, cause it kind of, the flywheel's in the way of the gear. So what I did was took the gear off, put the gear inside, cause it's on a pin. And I left the gear inside and then put the cover on so the pin went through the gear when it was already inside. So you can just slide that gear off and put it inside here. And it makes putting on the cover a whole lot easier. So these bolts are all 10 Newton meters each, but my torque wrench is too big to really like accurately read 10 Newton meters. So I'm just doing them all evenly and snug. Crankcase is all bolted up. I'm just gonna turn this a couple times just to make sure everything's spinning right. And then after this, we're gonna go ahead and put the valve cover back on. All right, so I just slid the valve cover back up through where I brought it through, and then we're throwing the spark plug back in. Got the head cover back on. Now just attach this breather hose, connect your fan cable, and then torque these down to 10 Newton meters. Just snug them up. So I reconnected all the radiator hoses, put the starter back on, put the boot back on, the connection to it. Um, don't forget, refill your oil, refill your coolant. And yeah, after that, start it up, see how she goes. Got everything put back on. Starts right up. Just about 10 hours later, she's finally put back together and running smooth. Shout out to whoever made this blog post about this whole game chain tensioner service. This really helped me get through all of it. And yeah, here's to 26,000 more miles.